Okay, you guys have this all wrong. You couldn't be more wrong about this even if you tried. I mean, seriously, if you think that Jesus, after he raised from the dead, he went to disciples and he was like, oh my me, I'm so excited for all the fun stuff we're gonna do together. I can't wait for the days that, we're, that you're gonna gather on Sunday at church and we're gonna sing Reckless Love together. You guys don't know the song, but it's gonna be a hit at the church. I mean, I just love it. Oh, 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 but what I will love the most will be the days when you guys remember to pray and read your Bible five minutes before you go to bed. Ah. <sighs> It's gonna be wonderful. No! 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 Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to sit your butt at church and do nothing with the life he gave you. He died so that you can live so much more. And you thought this was gonna be a normal funny intro, didn't you? Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we're going to be talking about the plan of salvation, like I promised. Now, this is a really big topic in the Bible, and we're going to be getting into a couple of ideas. And basically, the plan of salvation, it consists on four major parts, which is creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. So I came up with a little code for you guys to remember this a lot easier. And the code is, I can fight radioactive and we're going to talk about each word and each part in more depth for you guys to understand better, okay? So, let's go! Let's do this! Starting with creation. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make men in our image, according to our likeness, not physically, but spiritually, personality, and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1, 26, 27. So God has a very specific plan and purpose for man. And it's perfectly revealed here in this verse in Genesis. So God intended that man would rule the earth the same way that he rules the heavens. So God made mankind as kings of the earth that we would rule and have full authority over everything in it. But God didn't just give us a job and, and say like, okay, just handle it, okay? In this text, we see something very, very beautiful. It says that God created male and female in his image. Not male alone. The Bible says that when a man marries a woman, he becomes one flesh with her. They stop becoming two people and they become one. They leave behind their desires and their selfish ways to build a life together in love. They carry each other inside their hearts. This is what God looks like. No wonder why the church is called the bride of Christ inside the Bible. Oh my God, he's God. Hallelujah. Now, this is what we can do, right? The seed for creation can. We were created to be one with God and rule the earth in this close relationship with Him. God created us so that we can know Him, love Him, and work with Him on the earth. God created us to share everything with Him. He wants us to share our joys together. He wants us to share our pains, our plans. God wants us to live everything together. That sounds wonderful, right? Yeah, well, we kind of messed up. You had one job. Just the one. Now, this is where the fall comes in. God created us with this amazing purpose and with this beautiful plan. But just like any good person, God doesn't force us to love him and be his friends. He gave us a choice whether we are going to live life on his terms or whether we're going to try and live life on our terms. This is represented in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God wasn't trying to mess with them by not letting them eat from this tree, but it was a test to see if humans were truly going to trust in God. And we've all seen this story before, we know how it ends. They believed that eating from the tree was going to make them more happy than trusting in God. Kids, this is sin. Sin is every attempt that we try to find happiness outside of the person of God. Now God told them if they ate from the tree that they would die, right? But they didn't. Did they? Yes, of course they did. 
Death is not an event in the Bible. It's a condition. It's a disease. Kids, picture it as kind of like being a zombie. Yeah! They're not dead, but they're most certainly not alive. It is totally selfish and incapable of thinking for others. It will even hurt his fellow zombies to get what he wants. It doesn't love anything. It only lives to kill living people and to eat from their flesh. That's disgusting. You see kids, sin is like this virus that totally corrupted all of humanity. Now, fight. F for fight. Because now we fight to survive. We don't care who we have to hurt to live. We don't love people. We love what people can give us. We now are destined to fight against this virus for the rest of our lives. We were created to live in love, but sin makes us dead and kills others, just like zombies. Now we can't shake ourselves from sin, no matter how hard we try. But gladly, there is hope in Jesus. Speaking about God and Jesus, let's make a really quick side note for us to understand something. God knew that all of this was going to happen, but guys, none of this made him happy. He was really, really sad because all of this happened. You see guys, many times we think that God is like this super cosmic bully that has no feelings and that he likes to see us suffer. No, God has feelings. He suffers when we suffer. He loves us and he doesn't like it when we suffer. You see the shortest Bible verse in all the Bible, it says this, Jesus wept. He cries because we suffer without him. And that's what moved him to come to the earth. Jesus couldn't stand living without us, so he came to our rescue. Now we're in the third part, which is redemption. Like I said, sin corrupted us like a virus. For me to help someone get healthy, I can't be sick myself. We need a savior to heal us and bring us back to our original purpose. Let me illustrate this for you guys. Because of sin, we were separated from God. To be separated from God is to be separated from life. To be separated from life is to be Ooh. death. Viruses and diseases make us die. So we were all destined to go down and be forever separated from God because of our sin. So God, to fix this problem, he went down for us in our place. God, in his love and mercy, he took upon himself a human form, lived the life that we were supposed to live, died the death that we were supposed to die. Now, because he laid his life down for us, we can go back to God. Expelliarmus! See? Jesus was God himself. Think of Jesus kind of like a doctor. He came from a really far place to heal his people. The sin virus was inside of our blood. And the only way for Jesus to solve it was for him to transfer his blood into us. The blood of Jesus has kind of like an antivirus, or the proper medical term that we use is antibodies. The blood of Jesus has antibodies in it that can destroy the virus inside of us. Except the only way that Jesus could save us is if he gave all of his so he laid his life down so that we could be healed. Now there's a catch. If you don't get the needle and stick it into your veins, Jesus' blood won't get in you and you won't be healed. Even though he dies so that he can give you his blood. In two kids, this is what we call in the Bible, accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. When we accept Jesus into our lives, we can find freedom from sin and from all the consequences and bad things that sin can bring upon our lives. So we can find freedom from depression, from fear, from anxiety, tragedy, all this stuff. If we come to Jesus and keep on coming to him day after day, we will always find the answer to every problem we face. Now the third word in the code, remember, I can fight radioactive. Jesus was kind of like a radioactive superhero. He had powers that no one ever saw before. Not only does salvation free us from all the bad stuff in the world, but it also gives us power to free others from the bad stuff also. When we allow Jesus to touch us, we are restored to our original purpose and we start walking in his footsteps. His blood flows through our veins and now we can live the life that we are supposed to live. People were never the same after Jesus came. So people shouldn't be the same after we come also. Let me show this next video here, a little example of the power that Jesus gives us.
buddy, can you look at the... Jason, look out at the Frisbees. Can you When we accept Jesus, we are born again and our eyes are open to see the beautiful purpose for why we were created. And we start living to help others to open their eyes also to see the beauty for why they were created also. Salvation is the door to start living a new type of life. Salvation is not the end. It is the very beginning. To be born again is to be awakened, to live the same life that Jesus lived, a life to know God and love Him, and to serve and help others. Now, this leads us to our fourth and final part, which is restoration. I've been waiting for this. Now that Jesus redeems all of humanity back to its original position, now the next step is to restore all of creation back to its original purpose also. Luke 4, 5 to 6, it says this. Then he, the devil, led Jesus up to high mountain and displayed before him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth and their magnificence in the twinkling of an eye. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this realm and its glory, its power, its renown, because it has been handed over to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Whoa, 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 wait a second. When were all the kingdoms of the earth handed over to Satan? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. When we sinned, because of sin, we gave up our titles as being kings and queens of the earth and gave that to Satan. The Bible says that when Jesus died on the cross, he went to hell and kicked Satan out of his throne and he took his crown from him. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says this. Jesus came up and said to them, all authority, all power, and absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything that I have committed. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of circumstance, and on every occasion, even to the end of the age. Jesus returned from hell after kicking the devil's butt, and now he says for them to go and to make more disciples for him. Jesus called his disciples apostles, which is a term in the Roman Empire. In Greek, it is pronounced apostolos and it means the sent ones. An apostle was like an ambassador sent by the emperor to represent him and cultivate the culture of the Roman Empire in a newly conquered land. This is why it's restoration. Our mission is to restore all the earth back to God, everything in it. Kids, let me tell you a secret that might shock you guys a little bit. Did you guys know that Jesus doesn't want everybody to be a pastor or a worship leader or even a missionary? Jesus wants people who are totally committed to the kingdom of God. That does mean going to church, reading the Bible, praying, but for the ultimate purpose of spreading the kingdom everywhere we go. And let me tell you, the dream that you have for your life is most likely the area that God wants you to win back for Him. Because guys, we need people of the kingdom of God in the music industry, in television, in health, in politics, in sports, in education, in everywhere. Now, we cannot forget our fourth and final word in the Plan of Salvation Code. I can fight radioactive Ryus. Now, Ryu is the Japanese word for Ryus. I don't know if you know this, kids, but Satan, when he was at the Garden of Eden, he was a small snake. But in the book of Revelation, he becomes this big, massive dragon. Satan has been eaten a lot ever since he left that garden. Now, what has he been eating, you might say? Satan, he feeds off our sin, our fear, our sadness. Now, Jesus calls us to be in the business of dragon slaying. You know what Jesus comes and tells you and me? Kids, get your Bibles. We are going demon hunting. Um, Hopper, um, I, I hate to interrupt, but... Um... You and stay back! Oh, 
This was such a bad idea. You see, Hopper, nature has a certain order. The ants pick the food, the ants keep the food, and the grasshoppers leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, bad grasshopper, bad grasshopper, go home! <laughs> and do you know how you beat the devil? The same way Jesus did, by loving others and laying his life down for them. Every chapter in the Bible that you read is like a punch right in the devil's face. And when you save someone for Jesus and you help them to become a better Christian, it's like as if Satan lost Turn to nothing in a soccer match. Every time we act like Jesus, the devil loses. This is what it means to be saved. We are reconnecting to our original purpose that God created us for, which is to rule the earth through a close relationship with him. Now we are in Jesus' army, and we are in the business of destroying evil and establishing Jesus' kingdom on earth. And now we live lives to love God and to love others the same way that Jesus did. Victory Screech! <laughs> so if you felt moved with this video and you felt that your heart burned with every single word that I said, and now you might be a little curious about being a Christian. I want to challenge you to go into your room where no one's looking at you and talk to God. Just talk to him saying, God, if you're out there and everything that weird Bible wizard guy said was true, show it to me. Show me that you are real. Show me what you have for my life and I will live all the days of my life for you. Guys, you have nothing to lose by doing this, yet you have so much to gain if you do. God loves you and he has a special plan for your life that goes beyond your wildest imagination. A life with God isn't always easy, but it is always worth it in the end. So yeah guys, thanks for watching. So guys, if you felt that this video helped you out and you felt blessed by what I said, don't forget to like the video and share it to your friends so that more people can be blessed with our videos. And make sure you don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can continue on your journey on becoming a Bible wizard. Thank you all again. Don't forget to stay awesome, stay safe, and God bless you guys. Take care.